We are live. Mr. John Evans, hello, man. Thank you so much for being here today, brother. No worries, man. No worries. Ple pleasure to be here. Yeah, we were just uh, talking off camera um, a second ago, and I was just kind of giving you the rundown of like, oh, man, this is the Marshall Gillen show. This is kind of what we're doing, no intentions. And uh, you just mentioned that. Like, that's the first thing is I said, yo, we're not really talking about business or any of these things. And you go, man, that's music to my ears. And then you said uh, on Thursday, you have another one of these things. And the person's podcast that you're going to be on is like, okay, what are you selling? What are you promoting? And um, I just think, uh, you know, there's so much that in the entrepreneur space right now of positioning and trying to do all these things that to connect with somebody else uh, like you, where it's just like, yo, there's no intention to what we're doing. You know, how do we start to, and this is one of the first questions I want to ask you, man, because we'll get into your background, but when it comes to creating content or social media, and especially with like what's going on right now in the landscape of the world, which is nuts. You know, like, what what is your take on that? I mean, you know, what is it that makes you feel like? I mean, what's the entrepreneur space like, or, or how much value are people really creating out of these podcasts or the podcasts that you've been on? I mean, do you think it's more of like a? It's. I mean, what's your thoughts on that? I think I think for me, like, content is so people are so absorbed to it, and they're like, oh, I need to I need to sell, 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 and I. You know, I, I think that's not the right way. Like, we're all here to build connection. The only right. way we can, especially in these times, yeah. you know, it's like we can't get out of our house. We're in lockdown or whatever, wherever you are in the state or country. And I'm like, well, that's what the content you need to be speaking about. You need to be sharing your vulnerability. You need to be sharing that you're still a human being, just like the person who lives next door to you, rather than like, you know, you're having a chat with them. Like we're having a chat. It's like right. we just want that conversation. We don't want to be like sold at the first 10 seconds or anything. And sometimes like, I'm looking through content and I'm just like, they've got they've got the wrong intention. It's like we're, we, we become influencers or, you know, icons, whatever, you know, how you want to associate yourself with. But we're there to serve. That's why we've come online and to share our message. Yeah. If you if you wanna if you wanna promote or anything like that, then do that off screen. Like right. if they want you, they will ask for you. And right. that's what I, I've been receiving. So I've just gone on, you know, you've you've checked out my content and again you I love your engagement with it. And it's kind of like I'm just vulnerable, man. Yeah. I'm just like this is me. Like if you have a chat with me today and then you read my content, it's the same, it's the same job. Yeah. I'm not putting a mask on. I've been there. It doesn't work. Um, yeah, yeah, that's interesting. That's obviously one of the things I do love about you and why I wanted you on the show is because it's I want to connect with more of that. I want to tap into that. Like, I want to talk to you about that. Like, what? how do you separate those two? Because I know for me, especially as an entrepreneur, and I thought that was awesome of you to say before we came on air, you said, I love when you do those coffee chats and you're just no yeah. intention. And I love that. But I got to be honest, bro. It's like, you know, for a lot of my life, I have dealt with that scarcity mindset or that lack that 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 lack even though even when my business is making money and it's jamming and everything's good and testimonials are coming in it's like i still you i mean I've, I've i've recently been healing from this but i still felt such a need to get on and sell 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 like you got to constantly be positioning especially as a speaker right it's like oh that's what i teach and so what's something that you how have you personally been able to disconnect where, where you've been able to let go and set the attention to show up and serve but be able to remove that sales and like i tell you the listeners first off Serving is selling the serving. I do believe that, but we've got to change the game as entrepreneurs. And so, John, how have you been able to separate that for yourself? Because you're so good at creating content that is that's with no expectation but an intention to serve. And because of that, abundance rolls into your life. And so, how have you been able to do that? Again, we don't want to get all spiritual, but what I would oh, what? What, I, what I would always go to is 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 this energy. You know, at the end of the day, if you're wanting to go seek the right clients, well, you've got to be your right self. Because if you mm. go get clients or, you know, you get people buying your product, you want the right people to be buying your product. So then they speak good about you. Well, if you're not putting the right intentions out or being your true self, you can't retract the people who you would love to have in a little mastermind together or have a retreat together. You can't, you can't accumulate that. So what I ended up doing was really understanding my core values and then thinking right if i really speak my truth then those who i'm serving are going to come to me and need the help and support they need and that's that's how i've been able to reframe in a lot of my you know i don't even do call to actions or promote because i believe that 
the energy I put out, the confidence I put out and the certainty I put out in who I truly am, that's what people want to receive. And they want to like, want to learn more about me. So, you know, it's interesting. And I want to, I want to tackle that for a second, but it's like, um, how, how did you come up with all that? I mean, did somebody teach you? Did you just kind of self-educate? I mean, yeah, you make it sound, I saw found my core values and I did this and this, but where does that, what, were you ever one to give lots of calls to action or is that something you've naturally figured out to your, figured out yourself? No, man. So, uh, I'm speaking this because I've been there. <laughs> sure, for sure, bro. And yeah, so I was, you know, I, I got onto the online world into affiliate marketing and mm. what I ended up realizing was that I couldn't be my true self and every time I was trying to say something or talk about it, I was selling. Mm. And that's when it really, it took a toll on me. And yeah. I just, you know, like you were saying, it's like you just, you just feel like, you're serving, but you've got to, you've got to sell. And it's like, oh, this, yeah. is, this, this doesn't seem right. Like, I understand I've got to promote this or, you know, talk about this product. But the only way I'm talking about this product is selling it. Yeah. And I'm like, that's, that's not how I should be doing it. So, um, with, you know, with help with coaches, mentors and everything like that, they've been able to build a frame for me and be like, well, John, we want you to be congruent in whoever you are. Right. So, we, and what I realized is that the way I get to serve, my you know myself as well as clients and well as entrepreneurs and people out in the world is be yourself yeah. because there's so many people in the industry who are suffering with mental health because they oh, have to put masks on themselves to then get on camera yeah so i realized that i wanted to go on there with no masks and hey if i get hate i get hate it's going to be a reflection to be like what can i learn what can i learn from this and what can i do better yeah and that allowed me to be my true self and confidence and it allowed me to just you know experience the world in a different viewpoint because I was always in that salesy thing and you know I didn't like sales so I was like oh you know yeah. I'll just try and reframe it and trying to play with these limiting beliefs but you know man and that that you know my mental health went lower because right. it was like what the hell like I was just so away from all my beliefs and my core values that it just took me on a road of like of a self discovery, basically. Yeah. So that's how I like transitioned into understanding who I am. Well, it's interesting because you do such an excellent job at that. I mean, everything that you do online, you show up in such a positive light. I mean, to watch you and to read you, it feels good. And I know that's I know that's a by de by design. And I know that you've you've honed that skill in to be able to show up like that because I think you're nailing on the head right now. You know, my brand has basically been on hiatus almost compared to what it used to be for like the last um, over almost a year now because. I became acutely aware of that. I became acutely aware of like, I was always selling and I, it was so much resistance and everything I did. It's like a year ago, I'd be like, oh, okay, I got to get on this, this interview with John and I got to make this podcast for the Marshall Gillen show. And it's like, I don't really want to do that. But now it's like, I've been able to take a step back. I'm here a year later. I've processed that burnout, which we can get into that because I think most entrepreneurs don't even realize they're burned out. The day that I found I was burned out, it was like, April of 2019 and my then girlfriend mentioned something to me on the couch and she's like, maybe you're just going through a burnout. And I was like, oh my God. And I Googled it and I was like, that is literally what I'm going through. And so you just said that uh, you got off of a mastermind and that's something I kind of wanted to talk about a little bit because for me, the entrepreneur, I got so involved in masterminds and coaches and creating content and going to events and speaking. And I just couldn't stop doing like I couldn't stop doing, even though I knew, oh, you got to show up as your authentic self and you got to take off the mask. And even though I'm preaching it, just like probably a lot of our listeners will are probably doing the exact same thing. We hear you, John. I hear you, bro. I know that you're right. But why, why, why is it still, do you think, I mean, as an, as a, as an expert, I'll say that because you're definitely an expert at what you do. And so it's like, as an expert, especially with such a volatile time on social media, like how do we as entrepreneurs actually disconnect i mean how what are i mean you have so many things you talk man what is something that like right at the top of your head would be a go-to of like okay bro listen i know that you know all the things i know that you hear me but you're still not doing it so if you are going to do an action what would that what what is something that place that start the main the main the main thing really is it everything everything arose around beliefs you know, we all have our limiting beliefs. And the problem is, is that we put ourselves out to try and pee someone we're not. And then what happens is 
that we try and keep running to that and then we get to that burnout stage because we're not trying to be ourselves, and we haven't filled our own cup up mm. and that happened to me what you were literally saying just now I was there maybe in I was there like mm, I would say September 19 and um that hit me and that really made me think like John what 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 do I need to do to make me a better person out on camera and that and what I what I learned was that you you have to do it for you like although you're there's a little bit of selfishness because we're putting ourselves on camera but at the end of the day you're trying to you're trying to create the business, the, the lifestyle you want to live, but yet you're trying to be someone you're not to then create that. Right. When, when you create it, why? Like, because you're going to get there, you're going to be earning all the money, and then you're going to be sitting there thinking, I wish I could go back a year and maybe do this a little bit of a, a different way. So for me, is it was really reframing and self-reflecting on knowing what, what I wanted and how I wanted to get there. Because at the end of the day, we can, well, there's two paths. We can go down one, which has diamonds everywhere. Mm. So we're enjoying the journey. We're walking and thinking, you know what? I don't need to pick up every diamond because there's diamonds everywhere. There is diamonds everywhere in this world. Yeah. Whereas a lot of people become so, they put their blinkers on. They're like, there's a massive diamond up there. I'm going that way. And I'm just, all I'm obsessed is, is that. Yeah. And they're not enjoying the process. They burn yeah. out because they think, oh, I have to get to that diamond. Um, so, yeah, yeah, man, that's kind it's, of what... Yeah, that's one of the things, that, and that's a, a tough separation for me too, bro, is like uh, sometimes as, as being somebody like I am, growing up very blue-collar, very hard-nosed, um, my biggest pet peeves are laziness and excuses, right? And so it's interesting because it's, I, I keep finding so many entrepreneurs, I don't know where we got this mindset. And I'm not, I, listen, I, I did it too. Like, I'm not, you know, free of guilt. But it's just like, um, I get frustrated because it's like, I feel like a lot of entrepreneurs these days just want to walk down that path of all diamonds where they don't want any struggle and they, and they shy away from failure and they, and it's just like, but it frustrates me because at the same time, I'm like, I want to be like, you know, if anybody looks at me as successful or anybody else, that's up further ahead or whatever, however you measure it, it's like, that's because those people ex failed exponentially more than most people ever try. And so it's just such, um. It's such a trigger for me sometimes online because I, I, as an energetic person, and I know you are too, but to get spiritual, but it's like, I, I didn't understand how, I, I didn't understand my ability to feel energy most of my life until recently. So it's a lot of time I'll get online and I'll see these entrepreneurs and I'm like, you're full of shit. You are lying. I, they, they're not really lying. They're doing the whole thing. And I'm like, you're full of shit. I can see through you. I know that you're miserable. Like, I don't believe any of this. And so it gets to a point where I start to get like frustrated which whether the details may be different, but the, the person that's on camera doing all the stuff, they're just as frustrated with their lack of income as I am frustrated over seeing that in my reality. And so it's always an interesting thing for me because I'm going, oh, if that, if that makes me feel this way, then it's really something about me. And I think that's one of the biggest things that most entrepreneurs, most people in general aren't willing to really take a look at is that you get what you accept in your life, that your external reality uh, you know, is directly based on your thoughts and your your emotions and so you know without getting too well, like shit we can get as skewed as we want it doesn't matter but you know in speaking to something like that like what would you say for, to somebody like me who's going yo bro like i i'm still doing the things but that frustrates me to see other people not living up to, to their potential i mean is that really just a manifestation of me feeling like i'm not living up to my potential for me is 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 knowing it's knowing that everyone has their own journey and everyone mm. has their own their own life lessons and the problem is is that we 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 believe that the people around us and the people us on camera and in social media and that are at the same are on the same journey oh, they're so pretty true. much on the same level so what what we see is we're thinking that they're level but technically we have no idea which on their inner work you know on their their self-love and right. you know, their inner game, where are they? Because they may just be thinking that the external world has all the answers. I'm literally writing a post <laughs> as, as we speak all about this because it's everyone, what every I've, I've seen online and, you know, because because we connect with so many entrepreneurs, right. they you know follow us and connect with us just like we are. Yeah. And when, when we really think about it, it's, it's, it only comes down to the results they they see online 
But what they're not realising is, well, what are the results they're doing off camera? And that's when we see the struggle in, like you were saying, oh, you know, I'm watching another guy and he's full of shit. And yeah. I'm feeling that he's he's just like not even being congruent with himself. Right. And that there is because he knows nothing about who he is or what path he wants to go down. All he knows is that bit of fame, that bit of success is going to get me. I'm going to feel yeah. much better up there. Whereas yeah. for us, we've been there. Yeah. And we know that that doesn't get us there. It's interesting because, I mean, I don't know what your, you know, your upbringing was, but I, I, we didn't grow up with a lot of money. We didn't grow up in a place where people were entrepreneurs and doing things. And so it's, it's very interesting that you mentioned that. I heard uh, a speaker named Ed Milet uh, about a year and a half ago, and he was uh, sharing a story from stage about how he worked so hard and began his life to climb the mountain. I mean, everything in all the weather and all the stuff. And he finally got to the top of the mountain and he went to celebrate and he's looking across the valley. And all of a sudden he said, I realized that the mountain I was supposed to climb was over there. And I had stand at the top of the wrong mountain. And it was right before I had my burnout. And it was the same thing, man. John, they told me if I made a bunch of money, helped a bunch of people, started to build a global brand, was awesome at what I do, had the fancy place, had the beautiful girl, like I would be happy. And so for me, I'm like, you're you're telling me all I have to do is just work to get that. And that's it. And they're like, yeah, yeah, that's it. And so I worked and I got it. And I'm standing at the top of the mountain. And I had never, even, even years before when I tried to kill myself, like I had never felt as empty as I did standing in my luxury high rise with everything working as I did that day. And I think that that's directly, directly tied into social media because I, I was constantly trying to prove my dad, my stepdad, and trying to prove that my real dad should have loved me and they should have paid attention to me. And as you're building your brand, you're like, I'm going to show all of you, everybody that, everybody that spurned me, you're going to be sorry. And it's like, I built every, I built it all for the, for the wrong reasons. And so it's interesting. It's like when we get into social media, um, well, I, I will unpack that in a second, but this is something I wanted to touch on is because my whole life, I've been outrunning imposter syndrome. And I know you just made a post about this not that long ago. And so like, would you just expand for maybe some of the people in the audience who aren't quite familiar with imposter syndrome? And then how do you think imposter syndrome is impacting the, the entrepreneurs who are quote unquote doing it, but we know that like they're getting ready for a big fall. Like what is that imposter syndrome? What does it look like and how can people combat to that? Yeah, so so basically imposter syndrome is basically putting yourselves in front of an audience where you don't feel that your self-worth is good enough. Mm. So um, this basically started for me when I started out. So before I went and you know became a coach, I was a landscaper. Had my own business when I started when I was 16 years old and I felt like a huge imposter. You know, there's guys 40 years old and they're charging this and I'm coming in and I'm charging that. I felt I felt horrendous because I was like, I don't want to, I don't know, I have no experience, nothing. And that's where it comes with like the main imposter syndrome is that we we believe that we're not our self-worth isn't worth either what we're charging or what we're giving. Right. Because at the end of the day, we're just and it money's just energy. We're just exchanging value. Yeah. That's all it is. But when you when you feel like you're an imposter, you feel that you're not worth um what you're actually giving the value to so then people get worried about what they want to charge um because they're like okay i'm actually not feeling congruent and i don't feel like i'm worth this but at the end of the day anyone's worth anything you see yeah. footballers they're worth you know they're millions whereas you see an accountant who does the accountants for the footballers and they're on yeah. you know, a fraction of the price Right. It's just an exchange of the value they actually provide, but it's knowing their worth. And for me, the one big shift I realized was that when we look at our life, we, we can create any decision, any choice in our life. And it's up to us to make that decision if we want to move forward and be, you know, have the power to be like, this is who I'm standing, this is who I am, and being actually certain that what you have to offer is the value you charge, you price, or you share to the world. Right. Okay. But when we when we really look into impost imposter syndrome, is it's it's just that limiting belief that back in the time, back in the years ago when you were young, that you got told that you're not good enough. Right. Or you're not worth that. Right. And what we what we realize is that when we start growing on this entrepreneur journey, we believe that, oh look, I can actually 
join this program and then I can charge this. And then they get to it and then they can never charge that. And it's yeah. not because, you know, you're in the right program. Yeah, that's fine. But it's not about the program. It's about yourself. Right. And people don't reflect on themselves, on their beliefs and think, why can't why can't I feel confident in charging whatever I want to charge or providing right. the value? And that's when it starts coming in. And then they start feeling you can see it on their camera that they're not actually responding with the energy that they right. are. If you said to them, oh, I would like like you if you put a price on, say, like, ah, oh, I'm going to, you know, can you do a video to this audience for free? Like, just jump in there and just do it. And then I'm going to do another audience. Can you do it? And I'll pay you $10,000. You know, that that it's the same audience. They don't realize, yeah. but they're one doing it, providing value for free. And the other one, they're charging. OK, right. they're going to be two completely different people. And that's all down to do they feel like an imposter when they're approaching mm. that price? Right. And that's and what that's, it all it comes around to. Beautifully explained, beautifully explained. <laughs> and it's interesting because it's like I find the same thing. It's like, you know, if you tell somebody to get up and sing that doesn't sing, like, hey, will you get up in front of this, this classroom and sing a song? They're like, oh my God, absolutely no way. But just two hours before in their shower, they're singing their heart out. And it's like, it's the same, same exact mechanism. Yeah. So why, what is the difference? Same thing with like speaking. And so it's interesting because to me, that's exactly what I dealt with for so long, John. It's like, I mean, I, it doesn't matter if, my, if I sold a course for seven bucks or if I was selling a VIP day for 15 grand or anywhere in between, I would get messages daily about you've saved my life. You've transformed my life. Your, your course is amazing. And I literally couldn't even read them. I couldn't even, I could never watch one of the videos. The, the second somebody bought one of my programs or invested in coaching or come to an event, the first, the first immediate feeling was, oh my God, what if they find out that my stuff's not that good? And that never happened. Maybe once or twice out of thousands of sales. But it's like still, and so it's interesting when we talk about when you talk about energy, because it is a currency, it's a current, it's a flow. And it's like, even though you can understand the value, it's even sometimes it still becomes really hard to accept what it is, even when people are telling you or the results are in. And I think that's what's so important about what it is that you that you preach all the time. And you know, I think that that's what one of the things that most people are missing. Now, I want to ask you more about like routines and things like this that will help people get out of that. But before we do that, I want to ask you, it's like, why do you think, why do you think people, why do you think people, you know, have such a hard time? That's not how I want to ask that. Do you think that the reason that most people aren't willing to self-reflect is because they're scared to actually look in the mirror because maybe they'll feel or like there is a shortcoming or maybe it'll be like, oh, I knew I was right. I do suck. Like, is that what's keeping people? You know, even though they know, like keeping people stuck. Yeah. So if we go back to if we really want to dig deep into like intuition, you know, I, I never listened to my little the little voice inside me for so many years. Mm. I was that that's what created that imposter because I wasn't being congruent in myself. And what mm. I would say from you, like where you're getting worried about not even watching videos is because where you were just talking about, you know, your dad and your step stepdad, you were striving so hard to prove them so then you got there but then you know on them notes it's not your dad or your stepdad saying you you've done amazing because that's the message you really want to hear because that is the you know the the moment which is why you're doing this whole thing right so all these people who are loving your program loving your masterminds loving your lives and everything you know the moment you then get than one or two people who are really connecting or really created that movement for you to actually start this in the first place, that's when you truly know that, oh, okay, I'm really like, wow. And you take yeah. it all in. Because yeah. you haven't seen that or you haven't experienced that maybe in them senses, but you've been receiving so much love and support, you, you've you received it, but you don't know how to handle it because the love and support you didn't receive from from the reason you started, that hasn't happened yet. So, so that's excellent. That's so spot on. And that's the one thing I keep, you know, people sometimes ask me, they're like, well, how, how do you transform people like, like that Marshall? How do you do what you do? And I'm like, it's so simple. Like whatever emotion this person is having right now in this reality, whatever that emotion is, one is ask where else in my life do I feel that emotion? 
And when is the first time I remember ever feeling that emotion? And it's like almost 100% of the time. It traces back to that one moment when you were a kid that you got the time stamped. It gets set in your cells, which is in your memory. And now it's stored as an emotion, as a response. And I always tell people, I'm like, yo, anger is a proactive emotion to being hurt. It's like, it's just something you're doing not to get hurt again. And so it's always interesting when people are wanting to change their life. I'm like, it's so simple. It's so, so simple. It may not be easy, but it's so simple. And I think that's one of the things that originally attracted me to your content and your brand is how simple you make, you break it down each day and your little bite-sized pieces of content and your great write-ups is it's like, okay, yeah, we all know this, but like, how do we formulate that routine, that habit? And that's something that you've become so good at. And I want to ask you one thing is that you, we just hopped out here. It's a uh, Sunday at the time of recording this for anybody yeah. uh, who's come back and listened to this. And um, it's like, yo, bro, how was your weekend? Like, what are you doing? And you're like, dude, I just walked 20, 20, 20 K steps today. And I was like, <laughs> wait a second, you, you walked 20,000 steps. And so like, what does that mean to you? I and mean, why is that something you do? Like what, where does that come from? And what else do you get from that besides just freaking walking 20,000 steps? Yeah, man. So Basically, um, the start of this year, I really needed to sort, you know, I was really focusing so much on my mindset and that I didn't actually look after my health. You know, that was going off the track. And I was like, well, at the end of the day, your health, your body, you know, fitness, that fuels your mind. So they, you know, your mind, body and soul needs to be a temple, I believe. So in order for me to do that, I need to learn the two factors, which is literally understanding I've, I've understood my soul, I've understood my mind, but my, my health, I have no clue. I don't know that knowledge, so I need to go seek out and get an expert. So I reached out and I got some coaching and completely learned so many habits and rituals and everything. And I thought, wow, this is a, this is a real game changer for me, but I can't just join a pro, like we were saying about programs, join a program and then think, click my fingers and I'm going to have a six pack right. abs, and great body and all this stuff. I like do tons of hundred pull ups and all this stuff. But like, that's not the case. I right. need to, create a solid habit so basically since i joined so i joined in um oh blimey when was it uh mark so literally when lockdown hit the first week we hit lockdown and i joined the program so that was april and end of march and since then i've walked ten thousand steps so i've done over oh my god over two million steps now wow and, uh, since lockdown so people say like oh you can't do anything in lockdown like yeah okay take it on me but i literally go out i'm 10 minutes down the beach and i go for a walk and i do it but yeah. through this week um i actually one of my clients actually had a post and it was all about mental health suicides and that and he was like john i'm trying to raise money for it was like four thousand three hundred kilometers to do um to raise awareness for suicide and mental health through rugby right. and uh, he's a rugby player and I was like, oh, OK, awesome. I was like, well, what I'll do is, you know, as I'm your coach, I want to put my part in. So I will double my steps and walk 20,000 steps. Um, so basically I, I create. So I do 10,000 steps a day, no matter what. If I'm going to bed and I've still got 8,000 on my Fitbit, I'm going out. I'm putting my clothes back on, put my coat on and walk in. If it's raining, it's raining. I'll get an umbrella or I'll just walk and have a shower. Like, around. like I created a discipline because I needed more than motivation. Motivation sits with us, but then it disappears. Yeah. And we need to create that motivation. So that um, discipline. So that's what I ended up doing. So yeah, like we were saying about 20,000 steps, that's how I kind of got onto the 20,000 steps, but man, and then I've just plugged my ears in. I listen yeah. to books, I learn, or I literally just take my headphones out, walk out in nature and just embrace it. Just yeah. be, be myself and be in the present moment because we, with social media and that, so many people get consumed by social media and they get so absorbed by it that they don't actually look after themselves and self-reflect. Right. And I believe that going out, walking, you know, disconnect from your phone and just going out there and just being with yourself and seeing what the thoughts you come through your mind, that's a moment to really self-reflect and yeah. allowed me to move forward more um, within my journey and, and life as well, which is I mean, that's amazing. So hats off to you to be able to double that, but to be able to do it for such a good reason in support of not only your client, but in support of something that, you know, you and I have are so intimate with, which is our own yeah. mental health uh, battles. You know, uh, where are you, where are you tuning in from? Where, where, where you're in the UK? Yeah. UK, right. Uh, south of England. Okay. Right on. So what's it like for, for you guys right now? Do you guys just hit a second lockdown or something I was reading online or what's yeah. the story with that? How's that working over there? Yeah. Yeah. So basically, 
it's so weird <laughs> um kind of like so we we were out we were in the lockdown for about three months and then we got out and then basically you know the rates were going higher so they're like right we're gonna have to put another lockdown wow. but um wales ireland and scotland which are still kind of connected to us they're in different tiers so they were like from what we got told we're all on the same tier now but we're not like so like our gyms are closed restaurants are closed everything's closed people can go to work if they need to go to work but if they can work from home they've got to work from home um so it's kind of mad it's, it's definitely a lot of you know a lot of people yeah. coming to me i did a post all about loneliness and it was like oh, wow God. like people don't realize that being secluded in four walls and yeah. um, really actually self-contain you and you you start you know really overthinking your life and you start yeah. worrying more and more and more so you know although this covid is affecting people you know through deaths as well it's really really affecting people's right. mental health and i just want to like like yourself is make that awareness to know that there is people out there who want to help and want to support you um and it's just it's just knowing that with 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 this whole lockdown covid and everything is it will pass yeah. but if we go okay. in with a negative mindset it's going to take us with us we're going to go down with you know with covid so yeah. we need to rise above it and that's what i used covid is like you know this is this is a rocket ship you know it can either fuel me or destroy me it, it's my choice right. i just want right. and um yeah so i made that decision but yes yeah, it's, it's it's tough here so is it, is it true? I mean, can you actually leave your house? I mean, I think I was reading a post and somebody's like, you can't leave your house or with the, without a chance of like getting in trouble. I mean, is it that serious? Yeah. So, ba so basically we can, we can go out, but the, the first lockdown was only like, we were allowed one hour a day or something out your wow. house. This, this time now, um, we're actually, we're allowed to go out, but we're not allowed to go to other people's houses. Wow. We're not allowed to be um, like, you know, mingle with other families, these right. type of things. You can, if you could, they call them bubbles. So they're like, like if you're on, like you're in your own house, then you could go see like one of your loved ones. And then that's just, you know, one connection kind of that's thing. Bubble, right. um, which you're allowed to do. But yeah, at the moment we can, we can go, but say if I was going to be like, oh, I'm going to drive up to Manchester, like up yeah. the country. You know, I'd probably get pulled by the police. Damn. Like, um, why why are you happens. driving? Like, there's no, there's no reason for you to go there. Do you get a ticket um, or do they detain you or what happens? Well, no, so, because of the whole thing, it's like they've got a social distance and that type of thing. Oh my so gosh, that's it, crazy. Yeah. So they, they basically just, you know, they've just got to bring awareness. So they, they put it on the news, you know, put it yeah. out. And again, social media is doing it as well. It's just knowing that we just have to, again, to make to make this better, that was the problem. Right. We we went in lockdown, and then people were like, "Oh, okay." We got out of lockdown, and they didn't realize that. Oh, the co you know, COVID's still around us. Right. Let's actually stop doing what we should be, you know. But they were like, "No, no, let's go get smashed." So the first right. day when yeah. the hub opened, they were like, "Well, freaking, you know, you've got to stop drinking." So they put a curfew at ten o'clock because people were getting so drunk that they weren't even doing social distancing. Yeah. So then that was why, you know, we rose up from, right. my, from my understanding. And again, yeah. like I don't watch the news too much because, yeah, again, yeah. I'm, uh, um, you know, let, keep, keep being positive. Yeah. yeah. But, um, well, that's interesting, too. Because it, Well, one is this is the great I'm 36. Uh, I've been through a few elections now here in the U.S. And um, I, this is this has been so uh, insane. I mean, it doesn't matter what side you're for. Just the whole process of the world going crazy is nuts. But what I'm curious about is like, I know what it's like here in America, but how how has the American election impacted you guys in the UK? Because I have, I, there's a ton of people I follow online and they seem to be, for the most part, super involved just in general of like the knowledge of what's going on in the election. And so what have you found or what have you sensed like for your fellow, for yourself or your fellow countrymen is like, does that, and again, you and I know that in reality, it really doesn't make any difference at all because none of it's really real. But yeah. uh, in the UK, I mean, is that is it is this uh, uh, election year in the US different from most election years? Do you feel like people are more involved this year than ever, or is it just not something that really you guys are even really concerned or thinking about for the most part? Um, with that, that's a great point actually. So what I would say is, it really comes down to what you know where where you put your attention. Yeah, you know, if you put your attention to the election, that's all you're going to be receiving, and. 
lot um when actually when actually trump got elected i was actually in america oh no and, kidding uh, so that was a different experience for me you know right. i got a message from my dad in the uk that was saying, nothing oh, I've been elected and then i wake up seeing like oh um so I had that but now you know now it's shifted over and these type of things is it's i get i guess for me it's whatever you know i try and distance myself i learn from other people and that type of thing but it has i think a lot of people have become very aware of it um because of you know they're watching the news a lot more because of covid exactly. and also you know covid's here but then there's like oh there's another you know not dispute but you know there's another election happening well they're going to talk about that as well so um, again, I don't know huge amounts about it. I know that there's been, you know, conflicts and all this stuff. But again, well, let me ask you this then, man. Let's get out, let's get on the spaceship. Let's get on the spaceship and take off for a second, then, bro. Okay, yeah. Like uh, separate of the details and the and the characters that are playing this all out on a spiritual level. I mean, what do, what do you feel in there? Is this something that you feel that there's some sort of a spiritual warfare? Is this something like a third dimensional shift into a fourth dimensional shift that's coming on right now in collective consciousness? Or do you feel that, that you know, between two spiritual guys, it's like, yo, kind of bannering back and forth. Like is yeah. the Trump and all this stuff, is that a manifestation of collective consciousness? And it, do you believe that this is a time of evolution overall? Or do you think this is just kind of where we're at because of like, just no particular reason? I, yeah, I, so... <laughs> Let's get spiritual. So I, I basically believe that there's there's a huge shift. Yeah, there's a sh huge shifts happening. But the problem is, so many people are nomads. You know, they're they're just maybe walking zombies. Which I don't want to say that, but yeah, you know, they're, 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 yeah, they're not they're not understanding the actual um, bigger perspective. And um, for me, this is, you know, again, when we go on a spiritual journey and we start understanding ourselves and start understanding the world and as it is, this is when we start realizing that, whoa, we're making a huge shift. Like there's a huge movement happening. I don't know, I, you know, I can't really say where it's going to be going and these type of things, but I'm feeling it. Yeah. I'm feeling that there's a huge disconnection from who we were and we're transitioning to, to who we may become. Um, within a whole world global and everything you know with all of climate change and you know David Attenborough doing his speech as well and his documentary like we're learning so much about the world which we never really tapped into enough right. the years before and you know so no matter what type of level of um, you know democracy or goes higher you know what right. we're learning within the world from different countries that's when it starts being really like oh okay there is something really happening right, um, right? because there's more, there's more talk about it and more awareness of it, but it's really, you've got to, if like, for me, I'm feeling that transition. Um, and for me, I feel blessed because I'm tr making a spiritual transition as well. Right. So right. I'm able to um, still be, remain grateful and bring gratitude and kindness and compassion to my higher self. Yeah. There's so many people were still stuck in their own ways and they're not liking this whole movement, right. the whole shift, um, which is again suffering with people's mental health and not right. knowing and losing focus of where on earth they want to go in life. Right. Yeah, I think that's a perfect point. I think that's one of the things that I think that's probably why most people stay stuck it, 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 no matter where they're at in the world is because they're not even aware that they're caught in this loop that literally is designed to keep them in the loop. And so it's like, I want to talk about that for a second. You know, but I, I, I think what you're saying, I know for me, especially it's when I finally did have that spiritual awakening, I was able to unplug from that loop and I would start to take a look take a step back. And it's like for the listeners, they've heard me talk about this so many times, but it's like when I learned to play the conscious observer of my life, that allowed me to start to have gratitude for contrast. And so I always like, I always kind of in a funny way, I'll tell people like, yo, I'm single and I'm, I'm ready to start dating. So like, I'll be watching a, a, a you know, movie and it's all sad and sappy at the end. And I'm crying because I'm an emotional guy. And I'm crying like, oh, that's so, oh, I, I don't want to be alone. And I'm like, in that moment, yes, like right here, I'm, I'm crying and I'm sad and I'm, and I'm accepting that and I'm feeling that because my conscious self, my conscious observer is looking down on me going, yo, bro, you're really living. You're really doing it, man. Like keep going, you know? But before we can get to that spiritual awakening, I want to touch on the mental health thing because it seems to be this perfect 
storm right now of people being driven into their homes. They're more connected than they've ever been, but still we're seeing mental health go through the roof. We're seeing suicides, even in young kids, 10 to 14 here in America, yeah. higher than ever. People are, are killing themselves at an alarming rate. And so it's interesting to me because it's like, as, as let's not say necessarily influencers or coaches, but like you and I have evolved to that as what we do here right now. But just as people, I know you're going to talk about leading with kindness and being present and acceptance and stuff, but it's just like, what is, how do how does somebody unplug from that loop where they have the job because they have to pay the bills, which gets them locked in. And then they tap into social media or real media or Hollywood movies. And everything just becomes this cycle that they never even realize that they're on the wheel. And so how would you see, I mean, what do you, what do, what do you think? I mean, if somebody asks me, I'm going to tell them to take mushrooms, but I don't know if everybody can just take mushrooms. So it's like, like, how can people have that spiritual awakening? I mean, what is a good one? How can somebody just even start to look at their life and kind of give it a diagnostic to be like, yo, am I caught in that loop? Like, what is something that you found for your clients or for you in the past? Yeah, so I think I think the one thing I'm going to stay around to is the, again, we've got to be present, which we know. But the only the fastest way to become present is being grateful. And then the fastest way to understand gratitude is to write is to Ooh, really understand yeah. what, what, you're, what you're thinking and put it down on paper. Because the problem is, is we, don't, we don't experience our thoughts. And the problem is, is we never improve. The reason we're in that cycle is because we never self-reflect on the thoughts which we're feeling. And about 70% of them are from yesterday. Oh, yeah. You know? And then like 65% of that are all negative. So you're in that loop straight away. And the only way to become away, like become aware of it is to understand what you're feeling. Right. To ask yourself what you're feeling. Yeah. So literally writing down the simple things, just basically, you know, brain dump what's on your mind. And then you'll start understanding and thinking, ah, last week I wrote the same thing. Now I'm aware. Right. Now I'm ready to change. What do yeah. I need to do different? Oh, and then so they start looking for um you know a, a more awareness or more understanding or they want to ask their questions right you know? and that's when that's that's for me that was the huge shift is that i realized that i'm doing the same cycle yet i'm still achieving success right and i hit failure because i achieved success and then i hit pretty much depression because wow. i succeed success Absolutely. and i was like, well, there's 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 lessons to be learned so i can't just sit there and think because then i'm like i'm stuck you're in your four walls yeah. you don't know what you're doing whereas if we can get it on paper we've then freed up some space for then the next day to have some new thoughts 100 percent. yeah i think that's spot on and that's something i always say a lot too it's like you know to kind of make it you know, visual for some people it's like imagine if you're just holding on to two bowling balls hanging at your side and you literally never put them down. I mean, you're going to get tired. Your arms are going to burn. You're going to eventually have to put them down. It's like, I think people put too little emphasis or too little weight on the fact that mentally it's the same way. Oh no, it's a steel trap up here. Don't worry. I got it. It's like, yeah, I, I know that you do, but you really don't because it doesn't really work like that. And so it's interesting because you, <clears throat> one of the things that changed my life uh, a couple of years ago was when Tony Robbins said, uh, and he says this all the time, but Tony said, um, if you want better answers, you got to ask better questions. And I was like, oh, of course, duh. And so now that I'm, I'm always, I mean, people will see me on my live sometimes too, and I'll be working through something. I'll go, okay, nope, nope, stop. Like, let's let's do this. Okay, so Marshall, why are you, and I do that. But you posted such a simple but powerful and excellent question uh, the other day, which was, uh, it was either, it, is your, are you using tech or is tech using you? Or are you running tech or is it running you? Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And so it was like, I thought that was such a powerful, simple, but powerful question. Like, okay, if you're stuck in this every day and you're arguing with people about election or arguing about people with whatever, or if you're showing up to prove your point on this, it's really then taking that step back and asking good questions to get better answers. How do I feel today? I feel anxious. I feel overwhelmed. I feel shitty. I feel worthless. I feel hopeless. Okay. Well, what are those actions that you're doing? Are you getting, and most people are going to go, well, I spend most of my time on social media. I think I was reading an, uh, a study the other day that said that they think that the average person opens up Instagram like over 150 times a day. And it's yeah. just like that wild to think about. And so, you know, where did that question come for you? Is that something that you, that you came up with because you were working with your clients or you just became so intuitive to like to ask that question and what can other people get by asking themselves that question? 
So what made what made me realise that is because I I had a thought and I was like, how like so basically I live my day with my phone on do not disturb. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I speak to other people and they're like, John, why oh, why don't you answer your phone and that? And I was like, well, I don't want, you know, Apple or Facebook or any of them to control my addiction to my phone. I want to control that if it's an addiction or if it's not. Yeah. And the only way for me to do that is to limit the distraction. Our phones ping, we get a vibration. And that happens so many times that when we put our phones on do not disturb, we still feel that we're getting a vibration, yet we're not, because our brain is sensed that, oh, every 13 seconds, I'm going to look at my phone. Yes. So I wanted to ask that question to see what other people and how they would actually understand themselves looking at that question, because I looked at it from a perspective of myself, and then I took myself out of it and thought, you know what, if I... What controls us? Does technology, do we control technology or does technology control us? Right. And when we look at it, it, it could cut off. I'm trying to think, I think you put both, but it kind of is like, yeah. because we can put an intention out to put it, but how did you create that intention? You created that intention by a notification or by an awareness, by you going on that phone. Correct. So technically, um, you know, that notification has alerted you to then respond to that person. But it's up to you to choose the words that you respond with. Right. So that's why I believe it's both. It's a hard question, yeah. you know. Well, it, it is a tough question. And I think that is, you know, I've known this for a while and I was super addicted to my phone because it's validation for me. In, in, in a time in my life where I haven't always felt uh, worthy or uh, successful or smart enough or good enough, I can always plug in here, post something, do something. And it's just constantly dopamine. Ooh, John yeah. likes that. Ooh, this person likes it. And if you become so addicted to it, that it becomes, this is my experience in the past. It's that I, I got lost in this because I was constantly relying on my creativity to then go out and do something to validate that I was accepted or loved. And it became such a ritual and a habit. And I was so good at it that I, I never even realized it. And so I, I was feeling this, which I know now is intuition, which I was excellent at ignoring for most of my life. And now it's so simple. It's like I got here to Montana, uh, you know, three months ago. Um, and we were joking around about not streaming this live because I don't have the signal out here. Like it's, I, I have the best internet you can have at the cabin at, and it's just not good. <laughs> and so, um, the one thing is when I leave, when I drive away from my cabin and I go almost anywhere in Montana, my phone has zero signal. I can't even call anybody. And so when I got out here a little bit over three months ago, I was forced to unplug from technology, which I never allowed myself to do. And it's just, I know people have heard this before and I know that you, you know, cause you're the do that disturb, but it's so freeing. It's so fucking yeah. liberating when I leave here and I know that I don't have to work. I can't even get on to do an Instagram story if I wanted to, cause it won't post. And it's like one of those forced things. It was almost like an inpatient rehab to become unplugged from that. But I think that's, what's so interesting about what you're talking about about the 20 K steps and kind of getting back to the mindfulness that you're able to create when you go on these walks, whether it's with books or the thing I love that you said at the end is sometimes you just unplug, which I do a lot. And I just listen to the sound. And I mean, I'm out here in the mountains, so it's a little bit different for me, but it's like, um, what do you say to people that maybe, and I know people hear this all the time. And a lot of our listeners are probably taking good care of their physical health, but maybe some of them aren't. And I just want to know like, what has your experience been? Cause I've seen the transformation pictures that you have online and it wasn't that you were necessarily out of shape, but it's like you, you can tell that you're, you're at a completely different level now. And so right. have you been able to find, you know, in through nature or through being physical that it's easier for you to do these things like unplug? Or is there like one moment when you kind of was like, aha, and I, I mean, I know you mentioned in the beginning of the podcast, but like when you realize that taking care of your physical, your, your vessel, but you know, this is, this is a vibrational frequency that's messing up that vessel. And so not just as much as necessarily just physically, but how do we change that in the physical if you can't move to Montana or if you don't yet have the discipline to put on the, the do not disturb? Like, how can we start to block that out? That's it. So I think, I think actually I could say like a famous study. I, I'm trying to think of who done it, but um, it's all about the marshmallows when they gave kids. So oh, yeah. The marshmallow, yeah. Graph, you know, delayed gratification. Yeah, 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 and gratification. Our, our listeners in case they haven't heard it. Yeah, so basically they um, they did a study and they got about five kids 
or 10 kids. And what they did is they um, they wanted to know their upbringing and see how successful they would become. So what they did is they said, right, you get one marshmallow for 15 minutes. So you can eat that marshmallow within them 15 minutes. Or if you don't eat it, we'll give you another one in 15 minutes. What they ended up doing is that those who ate the marshmallow within the 15 minutes didn't become as successful as those who left and waited for the second one. Now, the reason is, is because when we're searching for something, we want that instant gratification. We want to do an Instagram post and get 2,000 likes or, you know, 10 likes or whatever straight away because we want that dopamine hit. We want to know, that, again, seek that validation that we're being seen and we're, we're worth it. The problem is, is when you're going into business or you're going in to learn something like, again, with my fitness journey, I knew that it was definitely going to take a very long time because I was I wasn't out of shape. But my physique and my my just structure was not how it should be. You know, I had no, you know, just my, my whole body physique, just how I right. positioned my posture was shot. And the way I had to do that was not realize that, John, this is going to happen overnight. I need to have delayed gratification. So I thought about the marshmallow effect and I thought, yeah. hang on a minute. I know that I need to wait and I need to become that little successful kid within yeah. whichever journey I'm going in, in my business journey, in my physical journey, yeah. you know, in my health journey. And that's what I ended up doing. So for me, it would be that what you've got to realize is you've got to know your outcome, but not tomorrow. When do you want it next month? Because if you look at tomorrow, you're never going to change. Because what you're going to do is be like, oh, yeah, I'll just resp respond tomorrow. But then that means that the next day you're then going to respond the next day. So you haven't made that delayed gratification. Right. All you've done is just giving yourself a tiny little insight. Be like, oh, I'll reply later. But all your mind's doing is like, I want to I want to check that. I want to check that. I want to check that. And it's like, again, there's different ways of doing it. They do like the cupboard or the safe thing you put your phone in the safe and you do a combination oh, yeah. and then you don't touch your phone for an hour or anything like that put it right. in a cupboard and um but for me it was literally making a shift in knowing that again i guess where i was building discipline i was able to then create the discipline for then connect from my phone because yes i use social media to build to build my business and build my clients and build my authority and everything like that but i don't want that to control my life yeah. Because yeah. I want to go out to nature, just like yourself, and have no signal. Have right. that for a month, and then boom, I'm just with myself, and I'm going to be able to be content and embrace the moment. You know, yeah. message everyone and say, right, I'm going away. Like, you may not hear from me for a month. But telling them and being congruent and being authentic and saying, like, guys, I will reply, but I'm going to have no signal, and I'm going to yeah. love things. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, yeah. that's, that's a huge thing. I love it, dude. You you make it sound. So, I mean, I know it is simple, but you're so great. You're so great at articulating. It's almost like you do this for a living, right? It's right. Uh, it's funny, but um, you know, I think that's the thing too. Is that that was my biggest thing is because even like I said before, it's like oh, get on, make a live, get dopamine hits by people that are acknowledging me or accepting me. It's kind of almost like I, I was talking earlier in this episode about the lack and the scarcity mindset that most coaches show up with because they they there's this fear like they have to sell or they have to they can't miss an opportunity. And I know that that, again, to remove a little bit from the actual content creation, but as far as it goes to responding to messages or engaging, it's, again, it was just another loop of the same thing, but different details where I'm going, oh, well, I can't miss, I can't miss the moment. I got to respond right away. I got to be able to, to be able to close that. I got to be able to, I don't want to leave it waiting. They're, they're buying right now. And it's just, I I don't want to dismiss women because there's plenty of women that go through this same thing too. But I know for men, especially, it doesn't matter where you were born at in the world. Most men at, of this time and age, we tie in our self-worth to our performance. And so it's like, it doesn't matter if it was in the boardroom, on the field, in the bedroom, like wherever your performance is based on, or your, your self-worth was taught for it to be based on your performance. What is it that you're putting out? And so it's something I wanted to specifically ask you about is, you know, we're talking about mental health. We're talking about people killing themselves. We're talking about entrepreneurship and how this machine has started to control us, especially in a time when there's a perfect storm like COVID uh, and, uh, and uh, an election that's driving people inside and people are literally going mad. My question to you is specifically, how then do we make self-love? How do we make inner work uh, uh, appealing to men? 
Like, how do we, how do we, how do like, there's so many men that are feeling like this, but how, how have you found in your experience? Because there's, listen, there's a lot of women that listen to my content and they love it. And that's great. And I love the ladies and I love working with them and helping them. But I definitely really have this feeling to want to even help men a step further because I've been that man and I've been that hard collar or that blue collar, hard nosed man that goes, oh, I'm good. So how do we make something that, that seems right now maybe a little cliche like self-love? How do we make that more appealing for the men who actually need it? Like, have you thought about this at all? Or, or what's, this, what, what's the solution to start to get into that? Yeah, man. So the way, the problem is, is what we've got to really experience and understand is that we have masculinity, but we also have, fe- you know, feminism in our, inside us. Right. But yet we believe that we have to be macho men to, um, you know, share our self-worth. And what I realized is when I was doing that, I wasn't being my true self. I wasn't being the person I wanted to be. And when we, when men want something, they go after and get it. Right. But the problem is, is that they then don't create the right intention to go after it. Because what they're doing is they put a mask on themselves and think this is the person I need to be to go after and get that. Right. However, when you speak to women and they say, oh, like, what type of guy would you like? They're always like, oh, I want to, can't, you know, I don't want this macho man. Like, I'm not after that. But yet when we're younger, we believe that we have to be that person. We have to be that macho person. Right. And that's how, that's how, again, we're talking about that cog and that cycle. That's where we get stuck. And that's where I believe that men are getting stuck because they're not realizing that they're thinking that they have to be someone that they're not to have things that they want. But what they need to, what they need to reframe that and look at a different perspective and say, well, if you want to be the person you want to be, you will attract what you want to attract. Right. So you going after something, someone, and trying to be someone you're not, when you get there, you're going to feel unfulfilled and you're going to have no meaning. Right. But if you did that and if you realized what I actually want and then go after it, but you really do, you know, you really understand this is, this is the person I am. And again, yeah. a lot of it comes around to judgment. You know, sure. men don't want to get judged a lot, but they believe that, you know, oh, they're all going to the gym and, you know, I want to go swimming. Oh, well, swimming, you know, why do you want to do swimming? Well, you know, Michael Phelps did a very, very good career. You know, we don't, we just, it's looking at it from a different perspective and taking our, you know, the men's brains out of themselves and then thinking, right, hang on a minute, who do I want to be? Yeah. Because I can be anyone I want to be. But if I keep putting this mask on, if I keep wearing this, you know, masculinity person, how am I going to be able to understand what I truly want? Because, you know, I bought a fancy car and it didn't didn't do anything for me. Right. You know, you buy a fancy house, you have all these fancy things, fancy watches, all these different things. It doesn't get you anything because you think that because of the, you know, the environment you're around or the society, the cog, you believe that that's what you need to do. And like you were saying, you know, you had to achieve all these and then you hit it and you're like, I was on the wrong mountain. Yeah. Well, that's very much like it's, we've got to understand before we start climbing, like I believe it is like a cookie. Yeah. You know, if you don't build, if you don't make that cookie, you cook it at the right temperature. By the time you get up to the mountain, it's either crumbly or completely mush. Right. And that's your foundation. Super that's your life. True. So true. So, you know, where, where, do you, where do you want to be? Do you want to create that good cookie? Yeah. So that means that at the start, before you make that journey, create your right intentions. Mm. And I think that's one of the things. Right. Write it down. Right. I think that's the biggest thing, dude, is that, is that this whole entire, I think that we could probably sum up every conversation, but especially this one, by saying something just as simple as there's two things that I, I always tell people. is like, first thing is, is that your life is well we know whatever you think and you feel but it really comes down to clarity if people just had more clarity in their life and that's it it's like yes there's clarity and confidence and certainty but just clarity like what is it that you actually want but most people can never even ask themselves that question because this sums up pretty much all of life is self-judgment it's like if you find yourself judging a lot of things it's not that you're really judging anybody it's not that you're judging biden or trump or america or this or that it's that somewhere in your inner work you continue to judge yourself. Oh, I'm a badass athlete. I'll outswim all these motherfuckers, but I'm not going to go swim because they make me feel stupid. And I'm sick of feeling that. So I'm just going to go to the gym and show them. 
But it's like, why? And I, I, I'll kind of end with this. It's interesting to me, John, is that this is the last part of what I just dealt with the last couple of months is that once I got to that place, realizing that everything that I have or didn't have came down solely, came down to my lack of clarity and then my judgment of self in one way or the other. And that, that was, that was the, the main thing. But what I found out next and which, which stopped me, uh, and I'm just coming out of this now, was the next terrifying thing that I've done all this work and I finally got there and I got all this clarity and I realized like we've been talking and why I'm bringing back the Marshall Gillen show like this is because this is fun to me. But I didn't, once I got clear of all that, dude, I didn't even know what was fun. I remember I was standing here in this cabin like two months ago and I was like talking to my roommate. I was like, dude, I don't even know what is fun. Like, I don't know how to have fun anymore because I've been so dialed into this is life, content creation, be the influence, you're the speaker, that I didn't even know what I was passionate about anymore. I didn't even know what I was, what, what I thought was fun. And all of a sudden I had felt again, more alone than ever, but different details, but the same, same emotion, same feeling of the cycle I've been caught in. And so yeah. as it speaks to that, you know, I just want your take, your takeaway is, you know, if a man or even a woman finds himself in that spot right there, like I was, and it like, sounds like you've worked through where they go, okay, I'm ready to do this. Like, oh my God, it turns out, I don't even know what I'm passionate about. What is, what's like one, what's a, what's a couple of ways that you've worked with in the past that people can start to hone in on that? Because I think if they know what they're passionate about and they can find clarity and then take away self-judgment, their whole life will start to change. And so what are some ways that you've been able to help people kind of remember what they're passionate about or what brings them joy? Yeah, awesome, man. So the biggest thing is, again, maybe with men, what we don't actually do is we never celebrate our wins. Mm. We So true. Like, yeah, it's true. And like you were saying, you know, then you then you lose what you love because you've never reflected on what you actually enjoyed. So then you've completely forgotten that moment and you haven't created an emotion for that. And you know, what fuels us is our emotion. So when we go to the gym and we go have a great workout, we create an emotion because we have a good feeling about it. But yet we haven't made that, the gym, a reason to go. Why are we going there? So the quickest for me is I always want to, I always want to make sure that people understand why they are actually living the life they want to live or are, why are they living today? Because if we don't realize why are we here, how are you going to choose what you want to do or what you don't want to do? And yeah. um, so that's, that's the biggest thing for me is really narrowing down is why did you get up in the morning? Yeah. You know, all these questions and we keep digging down. You just keep going. Why did you wake up in the morning? Because of this. Okay. For what purpose? You know, that's a, an amazing question to ask. For what purpose? What was the purpose for you waking up this morning? Yeah. What purpose? And that means, so these two questions, you just keep going. Yeah. You keep going. And what you do is you find out, you like you're chunking down. So you're chunking right. down all of these amazing things. And what happens is it then starts unraveling all your joy, all your passions, why, why you do wake up. So then that starts creating your purpose. And then mm. what you do is you put it all on a piece of paper, you write it down. I know I'm giving so like, <laughs> you write it down, you create all these circles and then you realize, wow, all these things, I just need to cut them up and put them in and yeah. start creating the life that you want to create. And the one thing we've realized is, like you said, when you, when you go on a spiritual journey, like you were saying, oh, you've got to do mushrooms because then yeah. you get an epiphany. But Move, what we realize is that when we're in this, again, like Robert Kiyosaki says, the rat race, when we're right. in this rat race, what we don't realize is, well, rats can get out of pretty much any place. But what they don't realize is that they don't think about it. They 100%. just think, oh, this is okay. I keep right. going. So for us, when we start digging down and we start chunking, you know, chunking down, like for what purpose and that means, you know, when we start going down and we start creating this, we then realize that, oh, wow, I can create my own will. Yes. You know, whatever, whatever you want it to be. That's it for whatever yeah. you want it to be. Like, it I, like that's it. We're all, we're, all, we're all on our own hero's journey. Right. Okay? And when we realize that there's a moment to, you know, there's a pit moment, there's the, there's the call, then there's the pit moment, then there's the, you know, searching, then there's the breakthrough, then there's the inner breakthrough, the outer breakthrough, and then, hey, you're on a next journey, next adventure. 
Right. Well, what we don't realize is, well, what's the purpose for you living today? And so many kids for parents, if they're struggling, it's like it's, a lot of it is their kids. It all comes down to their kids because they created that they want to create a legacy for their kids. So someone yeah. who is single, why? What are you trying to create and then track back? I think that that's come, come sort of the trap though, is because if you ask most parents that who are living in that cycle or, or scarcity or lack, it's like, well, I'm just trying to create a good living. I'm trying to make sure my kids have a better life. But even I was caught in that trap very recently. It's like I was talking about wanting to relaunch the show. Yeah. And I've been wanting to do it for a couple of months. And up, I have post notes everywhere in my house. I've always been big on that. But I, on my post notes in the bathroom, I have, you know, Marshall Gillen show is number one and it does this and wake up and show them who the fuck you are and all these things. And about, uh, about two weeks ago, my roommate, uh, was like looking at about the things I bathroom. He's like, why do you have all this up there? He and he's not quite, I and mean, he's not like I am as in that sense, not or anything. But he's like, it just feels like that would put more pressure on me. And I sat and I went and sat with that because I was kind of at first I was like, no, bro, I have to have that. Like that's how I get it done, you know. And that wasn't like that, but that's how you know. And I sat with it, and I was like, you know what? He's right. This is the same loop I've always created. Top paid speaker is going to be number one. This is, and so instead, I had to get really clear on like, what is it I actually like to do? And at mm -hmm. the end of the day, it was super simple. It was like. Well, if it's only right now and tomorrow never comes and yesterday doesn't exist, if it's always only right now, I guess if money didn't matter and nothing, it, like I just want to make people feel like they're enough. I just want to, I just want to, to, if I can just make one person feel great today, then I feel good. And so I went and I ripped all of those post notes off my mirror and I replaced them all with a purpose, with a why, which is like, hey, you know what? Wake up and make somebody's day today. Hey, go out of your way to make somebody smile and all, all these things. And, and, and since then, which has only been 10 days, it's like the whole game has changed because I wake up and nothing feels like I have to do anything. It's all remember like, Oh, this is fun. Being me is fun. And so I think it's a very interesting thing when you start to talk about, you know, about how to, how, how to get between that. And I want to be respectful of your time. I don't, I don't want to keep going forever and ever. Cause I feel like that we could keep talking. Have you wrote, have you written a book yet? Ah, uh, no. So uh, no, you got to write a book, man. I, I well, I don't know. Maybe we're breaking news here on the Marshall Killen show, but uh, bro, if you, when you write a book, I'll be one of the first people to um, one of the first people to buy it. We'll definitely have to come have you back on to promote the book. But uh, have you some something like a little secret? Yeah, something in the works, maybe, maybe a little something. Yeah. So um, yeah, twenty twenty one is um, you know book uh, book will be um, hopefully uh, going on. So that'll be definitely exciting. That's um, awesome. Man. Yeah. So still got yeah. A few things i've got some great ideas i'd love to put in it and how i want to you know how i want to do it but yeah it's definitely in um in the back burner but the thing i was just quickly wanting to say where you Ooh. were saying about you know the post-it notes and everything is what we do is what we realize is that you know we've been carrying like you know like you're saying about the bowling balls we've we you were carrying them and they were weighing you down for so long and then what we do is we release them okay so then we feel good but then what we struggle to do is then we actually create more bowling balls because of what you did. You create oh, 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 show, number one. Boom, boom, boom. These are weights. Yes. Which you don't need. Yes. OK, so what what I realized is that, yeah, we can create a plan. We can create our dreams. We can have a box. Fill it with everything we want to achieve. Oh, I want a country, you know, a country cottage right by the lake. I want, you know, this fancy car. Like, I want to be able to, you know, get to my best health I possibly can. I want to go to, you know, spend um, time with my parents. These type of things. Right. You can write them all in, in this box. But, you know, that's confined you. Because then every time you see that box, you're like, oh, I haven't achieved that. Oh, I haven't achieved that. And you're carrying these weights. So then, right. like we were saying, we're judging ourselves for not doing that. We're beating ourselves up. Or for not having it. And we're not selling, celebrating the wins. Yeah. So, that's, so, that's so true. And you're so right. I mean, I know that because it's like you think about it. And I know that the desire for something is admitting energetically that you lack something. And so yeah. even though, which uh, not to get off on a tangent, but that's one of the things about the book, The Secret, that like drives me nuts is how they talk about desire, desire, desire. I'm like, no, desire is actually a low vibrational frequency. Like, stop that. But but um, but no, I think you're exactly right because it's almost like, I mean, even now I'm looking at these things, it's like, oh, I have this Mercedes Sprinter van with out for my outdoor adventures and I drive a G Wagon. It's like finding most people, not not most people, everybody is excellent at the law of attraction. What people suck at is receiving. 
because they expect to receive what they ask for in a certain way. And so it's like, it's such a great point that I, I'm just thinking of right now. It's like, yeah, you're right. Cause I would go in and I would see these things. And it was, it was like, even though I'm like, Oh, I got to live into it. Marshall Gillen shows number one. It was still, cause you can't fake out your subconscious. Like it always knows what's going on. Right. And so it's like, it was still a lack. It was still a sense of pressure. Oh, I have to get up and perform to be able to do this. I think you're so right. But it's like, once you remove that and you start to focus on like just writing down, getting clear on what you want and writing it down. Oh, I want a G wagon. Cool. But then let completely letting it go. If you want to post on your, on your wall, like that's cool, but that might not be the main focus every day. Maybe the main focus every day is like, okay, yep. I want the G wagon. I want this. I put in my order. I don't have to check it every, every 10 seconds. I think I made a post the other day that was about that. It's like, you don't plant a seed, then go out and redig up the seed every single day to make sure it's growing. Not and great. so I'm like, that was, the, that was the differentiator between me very recently. It's like, okay, I'm going to plant the seed. I trust, I'm letting go and letting God, I'm going to trust the universe, the, the energy to work the way it's supposed to. But instead of constantly reminding myself of what I have to live up to or what I'm not now, even if I think I'm not doing that, I'm going to instead put things in front of me that remind me of who I want to be, which is, yeah, I don't, I don't necessarily want to be the best podcast host. What I want to be is I want to be the best podcast host because I know the more people that are influenced by the conversations that we have, the more people that won't want to kill themselves. And when I was able to remove myself from the G wagon and focus on, let's get one person not to kill themselves today. And how about you just trust the universe to give you what you asked for because you planted the seed of abundance of money, of freedom, of friendship, of love or whatever. And if I, okay, I'm going to write that in the wall. I'm letting it go. And now I'm focused on every day is just this one thing. And that's been the game changer for me. And I'm sure that you'd probably say the same thing. That's it. So I was, I was literally going to say the other way is so on my mirror. I write on my mirror. I am enough. But the other thing is I really did is I write today. I will inspire someone and I sign it. So every single day I see that. And the one thing I was going to say about, you know, with your G wagon and is that and Marshall Gillen show is rather than saying it's going to be the number one, say that I'm going to Marshall Gillen's show is going to impact lives. That there you've created a movement rather than a desire because the desire is the number one but the movement why do you want to like why do you want to be number one you want to be number one because you want to impact more lives okay there we go so for me for me like with the g-wagon it's like you know what i would love to have a g-wagon so then i'm able to then go through the countrysides and go up some fancy rocks <laughs> you know yeah. like well, you know, get, get yeah, destination I think I can't in a normal car. Well, uh, yeah, that's true. And I think that comes part comes down to part of the psychology that keeps people fucked up too, is that like, I've gotten to a point now where it's like, I want a G wagon because it, and I know that's not what you're saying, but for our listeners, it's like, I want a G wagon because it makes me feel, makes me feel good. It's like yeah. having that watch I me, mean, the Casio tells the same, but there's something about it as opposed to if you would ask me a year and a half ago, why I wanted a G wagon, it's because Marshall Gill on the top eight speaker is supposed to drive a G wagon. The reason that Marshall Gillen buys this watch is because he's supposed to wear this watch. That's who I am. So I've got to, you know, it's a thing. Well, instead of now, it's like I, I've moved to a place and I love how you said it because I, I wasn't thinking of it as a celebration, but you're right. And again, not to keep going back to Ed Milet, but the same talk that Ed was talking about earlier, he goes, people look and he, I don't know if you've ever met Ed or anything like this, but he's like the nicest guy in the world. Yeah. And he talks about that too. He says in the past, he goes like, listen, he goes, when I put my hand on my, the, the car, the handle of my car or the office, uh, uh, the handle of my office, or I'm walking into the gym, he's like, those are reminders of how hard I worked and to celebrate what it is that I'm doing. That because I, because I, I'm selfishly showing up selflessly that I get to serve the world. And because you give, you get what you give. He's like, every time I see that, that, that sports car, it's a, it's an affirmation to me that I am an ultimate manifestor, that I'm the ultimate abundance. And so I think that was one of the slippery slopes too, where people start to get to these things where you become this, this awakened person. But then it's like, when you, when you plug into the matrix, you start to guilt yourself for wanting to do that. And so for whatever your reason is to want to drive, drive a G way or whatever it is, I just think that you nailed it on the head with this whole thing, which is like, yo, how can we ask more questions? Whatever the thing is you want, I, I think they call it coaches, uh, the, the seven layers of why. Okay, why? Yeah. why, 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 why? And all of a sudden you go, holy shit, I get it. The reason I hate my job is because no matter how hard I worked for my stepdad, he always told me I was a worthless piece of shit. Oh, so that's why I don't want to do work anymore because I associate it with not being successful. Oh, I make, like, if you just ask these why questions, you start to learn. So that's awesome. That's it, man. And that's, you know, that's a huge reflection just to realize. And again, just to keep understanding. It's like, like you said, you know, just ask yourself better questions. Yeah. And that's the, 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 the biggest thing. 
biggest thing. Um, but also, you know, we could, again, go on for hours, but then you can move into identity. You know, yeah. like where you were saying about Martin Gellin, like, he deserves to wear this, you know. He's meant to wear this. And that's, that's you created that identity of right. Marshall Gillen was. Your alter ego was you, just in five years' time, ten years' time. Right. Um, so that that's another way of, but you attracted it. You received right. it. But, but still, you, you received under like what kind of a frequency? Because now I'm like we just said, it's like I'm able to look at these things now and say like, oh yeah, I deserve it. But I feel like I deserve it for another reason. I'm not standing there with feet in the ground going, I deserve this because I outwork everybody because I'm fucking I'm the best. Like now I'm going like, are you kidding me? No, I deserve that because I'm an ultimate manifester because like this is my reality. And I live in abundance and whatever I want, I can have as long as I'm willing to put out that the energy. And so it's just this completely different thing, but it's like, you've been saying the whole time, it, it starts with asking questions. How do we get clear on what we want? How do we create these habits that allow us to show up as that person every day? And then, you know, in ways to do that, and I know that, you know, and my biggest thing is forgiveness is acceptance and forgiveness because nothing starts without forgiveness. Uh, you know, that's ego's kryptonite is forgiveness. And so once you can learn to one become, a, and I know you know this, but once you can learn to become aware of what you're thinking and feeling, and then you can look at that awareness and, and let go of the judgment that you have for yourself, which then is acceptance and surrender. And then once you have that acceptance, surrender to look at and forgive People always go, oh, I got to forgive that other person. It's like, yeah, you do have to forgive them, but you need to forgive yourself. You have to forgive yourself for not being enough. You have to forgive yourself for being in that position. You have to, to give love to yourself to understand you are doing the best that you possibly could at that time and all these things. And I think you're right. It's like once you continue to ask those questions, ask those questions, it gets clearer and clearer and clearer. And I know a lot of people, when they ask those questions at first, because some of our listeners are going to go, okay, well, let's, all right, Marshall and John, like, I'll ask these questions. I know a lot of things they feel at first, and again, it's self-judgment, because they take a look in the mirror, and they, for the first time, have that awareness of everything that's not good, and then they go, oh, yep, I do suck, and then they shut down. And I'm always like, no, the fact that you have awareness of it in and of itself right now is a massive win. Like, celebrate that shit. And so, like, I think, yeah, you're right. Like, I think that's what I want to see more men do is, like, or people in general is just have more and i love again the way you put that is like celebrate just fucking celebrate what you're going through in every moment and don't beat yourself up when you feel something that's not good celebrate the month you have aware the fact that you have awareness that you don't like that and then ask yourself why don't i like this and so on and so forth so i love that i'm gonna start saying that more often about celebrating no no no. and the other thing is is we like we do you know we'll help you know we do more for others than we do for ourselves and if if like again, the audience can think about what do they, you know, how do they celebrate when they know that their friend has done has had a huge win? Right. How do you celebrate? They're sure. through the roof. They're happy. Yeah. They're really excited. Okay. Well, reframe that. And how do you feel when you've done a win? Yeah. They don't feel anything. Yeah. Because they're not doing the same experience. They'll do more for others than they will do for themselves. Well, right. we just look at it. We just reflect on it. You know, and you can jump up and down. Raise your hands, you know, shout and just be be happy because that emotion and that physical state will put you in a good mood. Right. And when we don't do that, we don't celebrate our wins. All we do is say, well, I had a rubbish day. Yeah. Well, that was dreadful. And boom, you just put yourself in a negative energy. Yeah. So then when you're trying to attract, you're just going to retract all this energy. Yeah. Um, or this negativity. It's so spot on. I, uh, I, I know I, I, I scare people away sometimes uh, who are not familiar with it all when I say the term quantum physics, because if you were like I used to be for so long, I'm like, oh, that, sounds so, that sounds so difficult and complicated. But I'm like, one, it's not. Um, and for those listeners who are new, you guys know that physics is the study of physical matter. And quantum physics is the study of what happens inside of that physical matter, or really the lack thereof. But I think it's one of the most interesting things, especially for, for me as a man, that is somebody that needs to be like, would Tell me how it works. Just tell me how it works. What is this law of attraction? And it's like, once I started to just dive into the, the quantum physics and the basics of like, understand that nothing is real, like actually none of this really exists, which science can prove, right? And then understanding that thoughts really become things when, when observed by a conscious awareness, it's like, for me, that was the moment when I go, okay, I believe all of this. So it's like, even if people are listening to this now, I'm telling you, there's so many takeaways, you might have to go through it again, but it's like, you know, we're talking about doing the inner work, but if you're a man or a woman like me who needs like a little bit more of like a concrete, I'm telling you, just go look up the double slit experiment or go, go research physical matter, not being real or something like this. Just those little two things alone may get you to a point where you're going, okay, I truly believe that I really am the manifester of whatever this game is. And I think that's going to be one of the things. Is there a moment for you, John, 
when everything changed? Like, what was that moment of a spiritual awakening, or what was it that did it for you? Like, for me, I took mushrooms, and then I learned about epigenetics and uh, quantum physics about a couple weeks after that, and then it was like, oh, game on, let's healing season begin. Is there something for you like that you can distinctly look back and you're like, that was my paradigm shift? Yeah, man. So, uh, so basically, it was in um, it was me sitting in the doctors. And they were actually going to be get, handing me antidepressants because mm. they said, John, like this is what we believe is the right thing to do. You know, she did. She looked at me with no judgment or anything like that. And what actually happened is I would actually not realized. But in that moment, I was so present within myself that I experienced another being in the room. And that being in the room was a kid who was 10 years old who was actually who you know named a few words like i'm not good enough i'm not worthy no one likes you john all these different things and the problem is is that i actually really when i was young i really looked up to him a because he had the same name as me so i attached a label that oh okay he's actually you know you know we've got the same name so we're connected you know and that but he was the smartest kid in the year so i looked at that as like wow, I really look up to him. So everything he says, I need to implement and, you know, kind of model. But then he was, we were playing football and he was shouting all these names. So when I was in this doctor's and I was sitting there, all I was seeing was this kid. I was crying. I was just about to get given antidepressants and I'm like, what on earth? And I see this kid. And that moment made me realise that was when I had the shift. I was like, he's 10 years old. Like, He's 10 years old. I was 10 years old. The words he said, what he went through was probably what he was feeling. But I didn't know that. I just took it all upon myself and ran to the forest to be with nature, you know. And but now. Something's happening. Like I'm feeling like all this weight has been lifted and I'm, I'm feeling like I can actually, like you know, move my arms. And what was actually happening was that I had looked at something, accepted it, and then thought, hey, I'm not going to judge him. Why, why should I judge him? And that was the moment I realised that my whole life I'd been led to know that I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough, no one likes me, I'm never going to succeed anything, yet I had exceeded, succeeded so much in my life but I hadn't felt good. It was not that, it was because I didn't accept who I was. And in that moment... That was when I realized that I was like, oh, OK, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make that shift in perspective and be like. I hear you. Thank you. Wow. And I did that and I walked away from the doctors and I felt like a new man. I had no I didn't have the tablet because I don't want to do, you know, I want to do this natural and I'm, you know, give me two weeks and I'll come back and sit and then consult me again. And I did that and she she literally was blown away by what, you know, how I transitioned. Wow. Like the person I was and then the person I was two weeks later. She wow. was blown away. And that, two so weeks? that for me, yeah, two weeks for that wow. for me was my, I literally went home after that and I literally sat and meditated and just sat there and just was like tears down my eyes. And I just literally just thought, and it was like I was transitioning into this higher self. Yeah. And it was like that, that basically like my, the person I seek to be is me in 10 years. And it was like, I had made that shift in, tw in two weeks in 10 years. Wow. And it made me realize that everything we have is inside us. Yes. And that was when I realized that, my life is to help people understand themselves so that they can understand the world. Right. Because yeah. what people do is they understand the world and then don't know how to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to, I want to, I want to make them aware that we can deal with it within ourselves and then we can go conquer whatever we want. Like you said, I love um, that. So yeah, man, that was, that was my uh, big shift and, you know, it still gives me goosebumps now. Like. Uh, yeah, it gives me goosebumps just listening to you talk about that, man. I mean, it's, <laughs> no, like, it's, like, it's like the different details, but it's like I kind of had a similar experience you know, on, my, on my mushroom journey, which was like, you know, it was me and then there was God. And this is a long story, but there was me. At one point, there was me and there was God. Like, and, and like it was another presence I could feel. And it was interesting because it was like 
I was both people at the same time. And I can't explain it in this reality because it doesn't make any sense. Like I was fully this person and fully this person having a full on conversation back and forth with complete awareness, understanding from both perspectives. And it's like, it might not have been that quite that, but it's the same thing. It's like that boy or God or whatever the source energy is that shows up becomes that reflection where you start to communicate with yourself, uh, you know, spiritually, like an inner dialogue, a thought, whatever it is, it's not something that's actually tangible. And again, it's like the same thing. You know, I, I bet you would echo this too. It's like when I went away from the experience to sit with it and integrate it later, what I realized is that all this stuff in the world is, doesn't matter. It's all a, man, a manifestation of me. And the only thing that really truly matters is love. And I can't explain how I knew that, but I just, when I came back, like that's what I knew unequivocally. And I've spent the last almost now two years really understanding that that feeling that love is all that matters and, and that there really is nothing else because it's it's interesting you know i i, I sometimes i weird people out because i go back between god and universe and source energy like what do you believe i'm like listen i believe that one energy made everything i call it god you call it whatever you want but that i it's like i just think that's so interesting it's like god didn't like that that key that we need for love and happiness god didn't hide it up on you know gibraltar it's not it tucked away somewhere like he put it in the one place that he knew that we weren't going to miss it, which is like right here inside of us. You see, it's become almost so funny because we've missed the obvious so much because we're also plugged into this matrix. That's like people believe we got to do, do, do that. Some, there's some external validation constantly being reminded by media and movies that you're not good enough. So you need to fix this. You need to, you need to change that. And it's like, no, if you just unplug, I promise you guys, everything you need is right inside of us. And for me to be able to connect with people like you, you know, especially somebody I've never met who's all the way across the pond, halfway across the world. It's like, you know, I think that's what's so important that people take away from these, these conversations is that community or power of association, connecting with people who are, who are where you're at or where you want to go is of the utmost importance. And even in a time in, in, you know, when we're locked into these four walls of some lockdown or some construct by man, and a time where we have more opportunity to connect than ever, then why do 99% of people are so unhappy? And it's like, well, because you guys aren't asking yourselves these questions. You're not getting clear on what you want. You're not stopping and being. You're not, it's self judgment. And if, if and when you do connect, make them connections that are like this. I mean, I was just talking to you, John. You said, uh, and you were talking about earlier program, you just got off of a mastermind call where it's like you are getting online with a bunch of other successful business owners and you guys are learning from somebody who's just a, has had a little bit more success in the business realm than you guys. And now collectively you get to come to, together. You're very protective of not only your physical energy, but even your online virtual energy with who you surround yourself with. And then as soon as it's all over, do not disturb. And you plug back in when you decide it's good for John. And it's like, I just think that's such an amazing thing. Man. I mean, I, so many people don't understand that. And to hear you expand on that for the last 90 minutes has been incredible. Yeah, man, it's just, you know, it's a moment. And I think it all comes around to is the one word you said is acceptance. You know, as soon as we realize that we accept where we are, we can then move forward. The problem is, is people don't accept who they are or what, where they are. Yeah. And that doesn't allow them to move forward. So like these times, they're causing so much pressure on themselves and then they're stuck. Yes. Whereas it's like, accept where you are. This ain't going to change. Yeah. It's not going to change tomorrow. So we need to deal with it. Yeah. And, and yeah, so again, I just wanted to elaborate because I know that you, you were saying acceptance is a huge word for you. And again, it goes with me. I've got awareness and perspective of the two words, which we all should understand. And, live by. and again, acceptance coincides with both of them. So, um, yeah, I think yeah. that's what I think that's what's so terrifying about people though. And that's what I mean, when I tell people things, and again, I understand that if you know if you've lost somebody, you know, to disease or things like this, uh, you know, things that I say might really upset you. Um, but what I find is when I tell people you get what you accept, or that uh, your reality is a direct reflection of your internal thoughts or feelings, or that you can heal yourself from anything or or any of these things, kind of what's what we're saying is that I think it's interesting, it's hard for people to accept because the alternative to accept it, like once they accept. That means that their life is then supposed to get better in some way or have to admit that they are infinite beings or that they are in living abundance. And I think that people are so programmed that when they hear that, they're so scared and there's so much fear that there's an anger that triggers inside of them because they're like, you don't know my life because they want to justify staying in their loop. Because if they if they accept what they don't like, then somehow they, they think that that like a, is a negative thing on them. Like there's this girl I'm kind of talking with and I said something to her about accepting her reality and she kind of got a little, and she's amazing if you're listening to this babe, like, sorry, I'm not, not trying to, but it's like, you know, she got triggered for a second, you know, and then she came back later and was like, no, you're right, I get it. 
And I'm like, listen, I just because your reality is this way, I'm not saying that you fucking chose that where you're like, yeah, make my life kind of half shitty. Like, no, nobody's asking for that. But the acceptance that you are in complete control of your reality, I think that scares the shit out of a lot of people. I know for guys like you and I, it may not have always been like that, but when I found that out, I got excited. So I try to tell some of my clients, I'm like, listen, there's two ways it can go. When you find out that everything is your fault, either you're going to stay in the same pattern, which is woe is me. That's not true. I don't suck. You don't know my life. Or you go, wait a second. Everything is my fault. Like everything. I'm like, yeah, yeah. They're like, that's awesome. Cause the only person I have to change is me. And that means there's only one person standing in my way. Like that's so for me, it's like, that's the best news. But again, I think it's, um, it's what you talk about on your timeline and your life all the time. And what you're so good at is helping people see these habits and routines they have. And then you give people the how to of how to actually implement these things. And so it's like, if you guys aren't following John uh, on social media yet, uh, you 100% should be, uh, because as we've started off the show with, it's, it's all integrity. I mean, there's nothing. Yeah. Obviously there's things that you sell and that you do and you do it at a high level and you transform lives, but it's like, that's what I love about what you're doing is that there's just, there's no, there's no ego to it. It's just all intention. It's just all like, yo, I'm here to serve. Hey, yo, did you know that I have dyslexic? I'm dyslexic. And I don't let that shit stop me. This, or, this is my vulnerability. This is my thing. Don't let that be an excuse. And so for anybody that's you know tuned into this, um, I think you got to connect and tune into John because that's uh, what you're doing is incredible. And again, not to blow smoke up your ass. I just game, recognize game. Mm -hmm. I'm like, dude, that's my dude. Thanks, man. No, I appreciate it. And um, yeah, it's just, you know, another thing is we, we could just quickly top on is yeah, people, people don't realize is that where we're, where, we're, where we're talking about limiting beliefs and when they come to that epiphany, they got two options is when you realize that it's, it's all your fault and you can make that change. What we can end up doing is thinking, well, where's, where's all this baggage come from? And then I just want to go give it back to everyone. Right. And then, then move forward. Because the thing, the thing is, is they need to accept that they chose to take on all these responsibilities or all these actions. But then it's up to them to then say, you know what, like my mum and dad were, you know, you know, teaching me these things. You know, I don't want them anymore. I want right. to be a different person. So now it's time to go take that luggage and give it back to them. They, they, I didn't, I didn't create it. I like that. I just created the outcome and it created yeah. me. So right. now it's time to create my true self. And like, I believe like, you know, in a lot of my work is I say like, I believe like I was, you know, I went from transforming gardens to transforming lives. And I, the way I transition and want people to grow is I want them to grow to greatness because they don't, they don't realize that the greatness is within them. Um, and knowing who they truly are, that's when they know, wow, I can make real impact in the yeah. world. Ooh, that gives me uh, yeah. So, um, but man, I just want to think like it's there, there's so many possibilities for you know everyone speaking and listening um, that we all have choice and we always make a decision. But sometimes it's the scariest decision. And like me getting on camera and doing doing my doing my talks and doing my um, you know my writing. Like, yeah, I'm dyslexic. Like, I I couldn't write a thing. You know, but I was like, how can I leverage this? How yeah, can I learn, so good at it now. learn yeah. is to do more? So, hey, if I have spelling mistakes, I have spelling mistakes. But, you know, that's being, that's me. Yeah, you know, yeah. Being authentic. And, you know, with these, like, it's a, it's a superpower. We all have these struggles. We all have these doubts. And yet we're all, all completely over these, you know, completely different countries. And when we realize that we can actually make an impact not only by the people we're involved with but people larger and we're being our true selves that's when we start making true fulfillment and meaning because mm. we love to do or we learn and then yeah. we love to do and then we share and when we share like you know you do something great at work and then you're like oh that was amazing when you come home you want to share it even if it's to the dog you want to share it because you yeah. feel good Yes. Because you're sharing. Well, you're not putting a judgment on there. You're not creating this false perception. You're just sharing your experience. Right. And that's what people need to know. And that's what I, oh, you know, I put out. And so do you do, Marshall, as well. Was like, you know, we've been following each other for years. And I was just like, it's crazy, like how we've both transitioned and, you know, grown into like, yeah. you know, 
all these things and learn all these different journeys um within within our own journey you know right. um which is amazing man and i'm again it's just a huge privilege to be on it and uh yeah, yeah it feels good doesn't it? i mean like you said i mean like even th that kind of gives me chills it's like we have been following each other for a long yeah. time and, and we have seen this evolution and it's back to like what you were just saying about your clients or even helping somebody else find that greatness inside of them like not to sound cliche or corny but it's just like i know that you can relate but it's like that moment when you're able to give that to somebody else to allow them to realize that they're great i love that when somebody when i just meet somebody and i and like they have this perception and i'm like whoa whoa wait a second what you don't realize is this is what you're great at and they go oh my gosh you're right and i, I know that like i know that you feel that same way too it's i don't even care if anybody sees it it feels so good and then when you guys the listeners can stack those kind of experiences together now you can get on conversations like john and i are having where we can now find elation by reminiscing with each other like oh do you remember you came from oh do you remember where you came from look where we're at now oh we, we, uh, we get to feel this because we're, we're we became it's a habit not because we wanted to pat in the back because selfishly it makes us feel good i think i was listening to a denzel washington speech one time and he was saying uh the most selfish thing you the most selfless thing you can do is be selfish because of the good feelings that i get when I do that, it's a very selfish reason that I am selfless. And I think that once you can start to learn and balance that and we can create that frequency and that vibration over and over again, everything kind of changes around you. And then one day you look up and it's like, yo, we've been connected for years. It's the first time we've made content together. I'm having a good time. Like, this is amazing. I love this talk. And I just think that, you know, and I know you'd say the same thing, but for me, it's I have that very, that image to always, and so when I always say on stage, it's like, I do this for the 13 year old boy who's sitting on the corner of his bed out on some farm who wants to kill himself because he thinks that everybody hates him, that he sucks. And so now every time I get that one opportunity to make somebody, and whatever that is for you, whatever that moment is for you, the same thing. It's like, yo, like if you if people could just realize that they have that there's infinite power in being able to empower somebody else, that's when the whole game changes. And I think uh, but it's it's not easy. It's not easy. We just spend a whole 90 minutes talking about how even when you know that as an entrepreneur or a game changer, you still fuck up. So it's uh I, I don't know i just think earth is so cool i think life is so freaking cool man it, it, yeah definitely like everything you just said and it's kind of it gives us it gives us that sense of adventure and that's what we want you know when we're, yeah. when we're saying, like like you're saying you're you know the 13 year old well at the end of the day when we're 13 or we're young what do we want we want adventure we want fun and when we grow up we lose that yeah it's beat out um, of it programmed uh, out of it yeah so i just yeah we, we grow out of it but we shouldn't yeah and when we shouldn't that means that we then need to just rethink how we want to live our life and like you said it's 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 a lot of like we you know we've talked for some time now and it's there's so many things you can do to create the life you want to create yeah but then it all comes down to that decision and to accept everything you you are today is because of you yeah yeah absolutely because you made that decision you made that choice to move over there choose that job you know pick um pick partner up with that girlfriend boyfriend like all these different things that was your choice yeah yeah it may have been I, I, by someone but you made that choice and maybe them choices weren't the right choices but what we can reflect on is again i can leave you with this is what did you learn from that yeah what did you learn what did we I, learn from the the decisions we made which has got us here because we can't make them decisions to get us from tomorrow if we right. want to be a different person tomorrow we have to think different because then thoughts if we don't think different are going to replace the next day yeah so that's how we make that transition on and on and on man Dude, what, a, what, a, what, a, what a cool experience, man. Super proud to be able to call you a friend. I, I can't wait to hopefully get to meet you one day. We'll yeah. definitely have you back on the show. This was a great conversation. We could go for a longer, maybe we might have to add a third person on this sometime and really get some good, something good thing going. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Man, uh where can they find you, uh, over, uh, where do they find you online? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, my main, my main focus is all on Facebook. So again, I'm sure Marshall will put it in the comments, but um yeah so just search john evans but i think i'm john dot r dot w evans um on facebook and then also um instagram but i do some stories on there as well so just inspirations and some daily messages which is um at i am john evans underscore so um, uh, there's my two channels what's the rw ah so robert william 
Oh, cool. Is your guy one of those pants? Yeah, I guess I guess there's another John Evans. Um, I, I love uh, it. I wish I had two initials of something really cool, like Marshall P.W. Gillen. Anyways, <laughs> that's cool, bro. Well, I appreciate your time, man. Thank you so much. Uh, if you guys tuned in, thank you so much for being here. Uh, catch yeah, us on the next you. episode of the Marshall Gillen Show. Otherwise, you guys go follow John uh, Evans online. Get some knowledge and uh, change your life. We're all wait. We're all, we're here to help you. So don't do it alone if you don't have to. Love you guys, and uh, we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks, John. Thank you.